All right, hey everyone, Riley here from becominganelectrician.com. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about a little carry-all case, I think is what they call these. Typically, these come in a really nice hand carry tool bag, and I'll just put on the screen here quickly. This is the tool bag that I highly recommend to you. Now, the one I do recommend is by DeWalt, but in recent years, it looks like they are starting to put this carry-all case on the side of the actual handbag. I highly recommend getting a, um, these are called maintenance tool bags. Get them so that this actually goes underneath the hand tool bag and it'll actually protect it. If this is on the outside, it's gonna get hit by a ladder, by something, and it's gonna break. But I wanna talk about how I organize it and why this is gonna make you a really, really good apprentice, all right? So before we get into the video, again, always check out my free book I have for apprentice electricians. You can get that by going to becominganelectrician.com forward slash subscribe. You can sign up with your email and I will email you my free book for apprentice electricians, okay? All right, so again, this is called the carry-all case. You might be wondering why I have these little bags and stuff and I wanna walk through why I highly recommend this because, so first of all, as an apprentice, many times you're thrown into really, really rushed situations. And honestly, most of the time your journeyman is really unorganized. So if you as the apprentice can be really, really organized, the journeyman will really like to have you around because you're the one remembering things. If you have organization, uh, this is actually a little bit unorganized because I haven't been doing electrical for the past couple of years. But when I was an apprentice in my early years, this thing was super organized all the time. And whenever you are in one of those situations, like let's say you go to a renovation where there isn't normal job supplies, like, you know, you might just have a work van and then Sometimes in here, you're gonna have something like, let's say uh, an anti-short, right? Something like this, right? Super useful to have. So all I'm saying is if you, as the electrician, if you can get one of these little things, and again, they usually come with your maintenance hand tool bag, which is what I recommend as an electrician. We have hand tool bags, and then we have uh, bags for our power tools. So the power tool ones is called contractor bags. Usually you wanna get a nice big one where you can throw all your power tools in. And then we have a hand tool bag. And my favorite one is the maintenance hand tool bag, okay? It was by DeWalt. You were able to slide this carry-all case at the bottom of the bag. It protects it and it's really easy to pull out. Now, the reason why I have these bags is because sometimes how, so how this thing works is you can see that I can actually, uh, I'll, I think I'll pull this one out. You can see that these things pull out. Okay, they actually pull out. And what was happening was sometimes the screws would go underneath this, and I gotta be really careful putting this back in. Oh, a sec. Because this is what will happen. I won't be able to close it, but sometimes what happens is a screw goes under this and it keeps it up. And then when you go to try to actually close the unit, it doesn't close because this thing is sticking up too high. So what I figured out over the years was I just got a bunch of these plastic bags and then I would organize each area for different uh, things that I would be using. And, and we'll kind of cover a couple of the different areas, um, but by putting it in a bag, then I didn't have to worry about it ever going under. And I was always able to close this because it's like, if you are in a rush or if you wanna go home, clean up time, whatever, and you wanna close this, lock it up, and now all of a sudden you have to go and you have to take all these screws out because now you can't um, push this in. It was really annoying. Okay, so let's just start up here from the front and we'll work our way through. So I usually have one always for like the blue morettes because that's your most common of what you would use. And sometimes again, if you're in a renovation and all of a sudden, oh no, we don't have morettes. Or even if there were morettes, like, but they're way downstairs, I could just go into my tool bag and just like, I just need, let's say three morettes. It's like, boom, you know, you're hot, you're neutral, you're bond, done. Now, I would also make sure to have a lot of these reds, okay? So the reds are really, really important to use if you, um, depending on how many wires you're splicing, right? So these are rated for only a certain amount of wires to splice in, as well as the size of wires you're allowed to use. Uh, again, you can always look at like uh, the box and it'll tell you, but it's always nice to have these reds around. So many times, especially if you are working with uh, emergency lighting, many times we're running it in number 10. Also, I have these what, um, typically on the job site, these are called big blues. Okay, so again, these ones are just like the normal morettes. Typically we call these big blues. And this is for like, you know, really big splices or if you are um, 
again, at the very, very beginning of the job where you're setting up uh, for rough and power for like the whole job site. Sometimes you're working in bigger size wires. Sometimes you've got to splice them in a bigger junction box. These are called big blues. And as you can see, um, by me having them, it's just, I don't have to go to a van. It, it, this would all be in my case. All right, so I got a bunch of those big blues, which is really handy to have. Um, and uh, that's just some bracket. Okay, over here, I would always have my what's called L16s. So an L16 goes on armored cable or like a BX wire. So these are called anti-shorts, right? We slide them in so it does not damage the wires. So anti-shorts um, sometimes are very, very hard to find on a job site. So usually they come on a reel, one bag, and what happens is one person takes the bag and no one knows where they are. So, so a lot of times I'll like take like a handful and I'll just like throw them in here in case I ever need them, as you can see. Um, and then I don't think I have any L16s, but I would make sure to put the L16s as well as duplex connectors. So when we are working with armored cable, that's either for a single connection or if you are bringing a hot in and wanting to continue power on somewhere else. Uh, you can also see, I used to always have these things prepared. So you can see I have quite a few of these. These are pretty powerful and uh, this is a cool trick in the trade. So sometimes what people do, like if the plug is too far in the drywall, people will cut these, you know, like they'll take a moret and like they'll cut it, like right here, they'll cut it and then they'll, it allows them to have a spacer. But um, I know a lot of business owners, like electrical company business owners, like these, these are expensive and they don't like, you know, seeing you cut these for spacers. And something like this allows actually more flexibility because something like this is ri really rigid and hard. This uh, wire, when, you know, if you're gonna put the screw through here, um, you can actually sandwich a little bit. So it gives a little bit more uh, wiggle room. And then what you would do is like, you, you know, whatever, whatever length you want it, you can untwist it. I'll show you like that. And then you would cut it and then this can be your spacer. So your plug, you know, if your plug's on this side and then the box is over here, it's kind of hard to explain, but this is just called a spacer. You can cut it and you can get the exact uh, length you want. And it's really easy to make these. So for example, um, with the driver bit, you just kind of slide it in with the driver bit and then you literally just pull the, the trigger on your drill and then the wire will actually wrap around the bit and you usually want to make them pretty long. And then in my case, I would, I always put them in this one, just like this. And it was super, super useful. I also have another one right down here. Okay. Uh, I also just have like some, some drywall anchors in there as well. Drywall anchors were also really handy to have if you had to install a light in the ceiling or anything like that when you're finishing. Uh, this one, we just, I just have some finishing screws. All right. I think, I think these ones are number six. Right, uh, the next one, again, this is unorganized, uh, but so here I just had some washers and some uh, some screws because that was usually the, you know, what, those usually went together really well. Uh, I also have just a bunch of kind of just different, different screws in there. Uh, sometimes they're just handy to have. Sometimes you just, it just comes right in time. This one here was kind of more like a bonding. Sometimes, you know, uh, there was a broken light I just would take the bond screw out and keep it. And uh, here's like a nice lug. These lugs are nice to have. Sometimes you need them. Uh, here's some staples. Yeah, I just always made sure to have staples on, on me. Very, very useful. And then also these screws. So these are called wafer screws, uh, but there is a difference. So um, I'll bring one out of each. So these are called wafer screws. Typically we are using these in uh, metal studs, me, you know, uh, metal framing. And so this one here is called uh, a, like a tech screw, a tech wafer screw. And this one here has the point. And um, typically I think I've been told these are called 9 16th screws, all right? Um, but anyways, uh, at the end of the day, you can just see that this one is tech, which means that it drills into the metal a lot easier. But sometimes if you wanna get that screw at a perfect, like. Imagine you have made a little Sharpie mark on the stud. Sometimes this one will wobble and it won't get your hole. So sometimes it's nice to start with this. And if it's really thick gauge metal, then you can go back to a screw like this and it will actually go in that hole exactly where you want because this kind of makes a little pilot hole, but it's, um, it's too hard to push through the thicker gauge metal. But anyway, so I always made sure to have a couple of those with me. Very, very useful because for myself, when I was uh, an apprentice, I was in both residential and commercial. So I just kind of had to adapt 
Here's just more, uh, more kind of finishing screws. Here is also um, number 10, I believe, uh, and it's also a, a tech screw, right, right there. Uh, oh, also, no, these, this, um, <laughs> these screws shouldn't be in with this, but I also made sure to have uh, finishing screws, right? How many times have you um, been finishing and uh, you notice one of the screws was chipped? So I made sure, uh, th this one's a little bit rough, but you know, depending on where you're installing, you could probably get away in a very rough area. But this one right here is very, very or pretty clean. Uh, but um, especially if you are putting them in a nicer bag, all I'm trying to say is when you're finishing, it's nice to have um, finish, finishing screws if you notice that your screws are chipped because it's all about a good install, right? Okay, you can see here, a bunch of just different wood screws, different lengths, one inch, inch and a quarter. And these are just things I've acquired over the years, like, you know, just uh, different jobs, different situations. This is like a crimp. Sometimes you might have to use a crimp for like low voltage or something in a really bad situation. And you can see that these um, these bags just work so perfect. I can, I can close it really, really good. This one here, you can see that um, all I did was I just took one of the slots out. Same up here, I took one of the slots out and it, it allowed me to have a bigger storage compartment. And this is where I would store all of like, a, all of like my long screws. I can't tell you how important long screws are. You know, sometimes <laughs> you're in a situation and you're just like, do you know what? Uh, I need a long screw and I always just put them in there, even nails, sometimes I put a couple nails. Now, another thing to keep in mind is you don't wanna load this thing up super heavy because then it makes your tool bag super heavy. Oh yeah, you can see here, here's some nails, right? So we got nails, there's a nail. I have different sizes of nails. Again, these were just, you know, when I'm on the job site, if I even find like a nail on the ground or something, I'm like, oh, I'll just put that in the, in the kit. I didn't like obsess over it. It just kind of like, if it was convenient, that's what I did. And, and even these ones, so you can see these are like, these are like a metal, a metal long screw right? That's a metal thread. And then even uh, you can see right here, this is kind of like a little uh, hex head tech. So we have tech and we have like a hex head. And again, just different screws I had over the years that as I was on the job site, and like I said, when you, when you work with different journeymen, sometimes journeymen are really, really unorganized and they put the pressure on you as the, elect, uh, as the apprentice. And it was always just like, hey, uh, do you have this? And I would look in this case and be like, oh, here, yeah, big blue. Or, or whatever, right? Um, I can't tell you how many times this came in handy and it really allowed me to kind of, I guess, stand out as an apprentice and stay on the job site. Because like I always say to you guys, it, um, at the very, very beginning of the job, you know, everyone gets hired, everyone works just because they need people. But as the job starts slowing down in the finishing stage, they start sending either workers away or they start laying workers off. And by me having this really allowed me to stay around longer on the job sites for finishing. This thing is phenomenal. Um, and even still like in the rough end stage, like at like different situations. So I hope that helps you guys, gives you some tips. I would highly recommend something like this. Again, this little plastic sandwich bags um, and you just kind of keep each area that way um, when you try to close these things, they can actually close because sometimes a screw goes under it and you're not able to close it. And, uh, oh, this is just a little uh, pigtail. These, these are useful if you want to do temporary lights, right? You just put a light bulb in there and you just wire it up. Um, okay, so like I said, if you guys got any questions, you guys visit the website, becominganelectrician.com. I also have a free book there for you guys. And I just wrote tons of tips of what I wish I knew uh, when I was an apprentice electrician. Things that will help you stay on the job longer, things that will help you learn, uh, questions to ask your journeyman, how to present yourself. And uh, that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you in the next one.